Good afternoon. In January 2010, an 11-year-old girl from the Acham district of Western Nepal died of diarrhea and dehydration after being con confined in a menstrual shed. Her family and neighbors refused to take her to the hospital, citing religious beliefs of becoming impure if they touched the menstruating girl. The practice of chobadi, meaning untouchable being, has existed in Nepal for many decades. Women and girls are banished to sparse menstrual huts for five days each month when they are considered to lose their purity. Today, 8 in 10 girls in Western Nepal practice Chaupadi, and they are in danger of being bitten by snakes, freezing to death, dying of asphyxiation, or being raped. They do not receive much food, as cultural beliefs advocate that menstruating women consuming milk will stop cows from producing more. They are also forced to drink the urine of a cow on the fifth day of their menses in order to clean themselves. The cow serves as an important religious symbol in Hinduism. Communities practicing Chaupadi exist mostly in rural areas of Western Nepal, where Hinduism is the majority religion, and consists of basic tenets of ritualistic purity, deeming menstruation a biological process as unclean. The underlying cause of discrimination in Nepal is identity, a global political challenge that relates to the distinct set of characteristics, values, cultures, and traditions that form an individual or community. This issue examines the intersection of the female and religious identities, and analyzes the inequalities faced by women in Nepal due to the practice of Chaupadi. Ne women in Nepal face violation of their human rights, which are indivisible rights that are entitled to all human beings by virtue of their humanity. According to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 25, everyone has the right to an adequate standard of living, and Article 2, everyone is entitled to all human rights without discrimination. The practice of Chaupadi subjects women to different treatment to men based on their female identity thereby violating both articles of the UDHR. Furthermore, the interdependence of human rights also influences this issue, as the protection and provision of shelter would enable girls to continue, ed continue their education, which they are unable to do during their menses each month. These rights are positive rights, thereby demanding for government intervention in order to protect them. The, inalien the inalienable nature of these rights is also violated, as male leaders in the communities take away these rights from women. The Nepali government serves as a key actor in this issue, as, and they view it as a threat to their relations with other states. In an effort to codify the human right of non-discrimination, the government banned the practice of Chaupadi in 2005 and later criminalized it in 2016, implementing jail time of up to three months for those promoting it. However, the government's legitimacy was eroded as they were unable to enforce these new laws put in place, and there were no reports made within the first five months of enforcement. This could be linked to the fragility of the state and weak internal sovereignty, which is common amongst poor and developing states. Nepal is also state party to the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, or CEDO, which calls upon states to eliminate customary practices that promote discrimination, thereby viewing human rights from a universalist approach. Government strategies such as destroying menstrual huts in an attempt to prevent the practice have further endangered women and girls who are now forced to live in forests or amid livestock during their periods, which is a factor exacerbating this issue. The government's universal approach to human rights can be contrasted with the cultural relativist approach taken by religious leaders. Cultural relativism is a theory explaining ideas and other norms should be based on the cultural practices and traditions rather than universal principles. Traditional healers and religious leaders protest against the universalism of human rights and believe that the onset of globalization has increased the influence of Western ideals which are interfering with community-based practices. This reinforces the close connection between religious identity and the practice of Chaupadi. Women in Nepal follow these discriminatory practices in an effort to appease their gods and follow their religion while also appeasing male community leaders. The lack of development and liberty traps women in Nepal. Um, human development is a process that refers to the en enhancement of people's freedoms and opportunities and improving, and improving their well-being. By focusing on the individual, it attempts to enhance the freedoms and liberties that ordinary people have and views the impacts on who they are. Amartya Sen's capabilities model of development focuses on enlarging the real capabilities and freedoms that people enjoy. Capabilities for girls in Nepal are reduced as they are unable to access education due to inadequate facilities for menstruation such as toilets, which is another factor affecting this issue. This also limits their future involvement in the economy. Period poverty is another issue that limits the ability of women to buy safe menstrual products such as pads and cups, without which they endanger their health and risk health risk multiple infections. The lack of infrastructural development also leads to a lack of awareness and education about the biology of menstruation, 
promoting religious beliefs such as menstruation being linked to the supernatural. Women themselves believed that not separating themselves from their communities and families could lead to punishment from God in the form of natural disasters. They willingly undergo the practice of Chaubadi to protect their families, reflective of the impact that a lack of education can have on discrimination. Liberty is the freedom of individuals to flourish and make the most of opportunities. Human development increases liberty, and that increases the liberty that individuals have, especially through increased capabilities. However, liberty for women in Nepal is reduced as they are unable to visit places of religious worship during their menstrual cycle and are unable to live in their own homes or interact with their family members. This further violates their first generation human rights, which are meant to protect them from degrading treatment. Another key stakeholder in this issue are the NGOs working in Nepal in order to reduce the practice of Chaupadi, such as, such as the Nepal Fertility Care Center, which is educating girls and women in rural Nepal in an effort to reduce the gender identity-based discrimination that they face. They are conducting sessions with women in order to, uh, in order to educate them, despite the protests of local community religious leaders. This can be classified under the secularization, secularization thesis, which is a theory that modernization is invariably accompanied by the victory of reason over religion and the displacement of spiritual values by secular ones. Furthermore, the UN mission to Nepal has improved the condition of women by conducting a four-year project on the practice of Chaupadi. The UN views this issue as discriminatory towards women and in violation of the UDHR. Chaupadi also affects the equality of women in Nepali society. Equality is an idea that people are treated the same without discrimination and are allowed to enjoy the same opportunities. Equality can be solidified through human rights, however it is not possible to completely guarantee, as can be seen through this case study, where women are unequal to men in society based on their gender identity. The unequal nature of men and women stems from patriarchal social structure, a factor that creates the collection of social power in, in, uh, with men over women. The subjugation of women further makes them feel afraid to speak out against these norms and forces them to feel humiliated and embarrassed based on their gender. Cultural rights are often invoked as a justification uh, to the violation of women's rights and strengthens patriarchal systems. Understanding this case from an equality feminist perspective, women in Nepal enjoy many fewer social advantages compared to men. Other actors, such as neighbors in the community, also place pressures on families, forcing their girls to undergo the practice of Chaupadi. The main reason for the lack of equality is due to all aspects of Galton's violence triangle being present in Nepal. Discriminatory cultural norms and practices allow for direct violence against women in the form of death, rape, and inhumane living conditions. Cultural attitudes also perpetuate cultural violence, which translates into structural violence when politicians are unwilling to acknowledge this issue in an order to retain political power from their religious constituents. With women in Nepal facing three types of violence based on their identity, equality is unable to be realized. An alternative interpretation to this case study could be seen through Article 18 of the UDHR, which states that everyone has the right to their own beliefs and religions. By banning the practice of Chaupadi, it could be considered as a limitation to the freedom, freedom to practice religion, thereby violating one human right in order to protect another. Furthermore, some post-colonial feminists argue that women's rights have to be considered within a cultural context and that the rights of women are not universal, thereby aligning with the idea of female empowerment while continuing to adhere to religious identity. However, some families who have faced deaths and illnesses due to Chaupadi reconsidered the danger of this practice and have resorted to alternative means of separation or do not practice it entirely. This particular case study is significant as it highlights the combination of culture, gender, and religion forming the identity of Nepali women, which leads to their discrimination. Additionally, the laws and regulations that have been put in place to enforce, um, to curtail this issue have not had much impact. Lastly, this issue is significant because identity-based discrimination is not limited to Nepal and exists all around the world. A similar case of menstrual exile is prevalent in some parts of India and women face social marginalization in South Africa and Madagascar. Rituals for menstrual purification also exist in other religions like Baha'i and Christianity. Wider issues in global politics like female genital mutilation which occurs in some developing communities also highlights the negative impact of the religion-gender intersection. It is important to include the involvement of all different stakeholders in this issue and approach the intersectionality of gender to break down the barriers preventing female development. Thank you.